Hello everyone, welcome back to my European Space Agency RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In the previous video, I was concerned about the implications of our communication lines from Venus to Earth for our Mars missions. The communication lines from Venus to Earth were fine, but I felt that for our Mars mission, given that those are configured the same, uh, it would be a little bit tight. So I don't know how much benefit it would be, but I think we're going to go for the tracking station upgrade here and try to get that done in 225 days, or maybe a little bit later because you know we just need it done by the time uh, the probes reach Mars. So we'll need advanced communications, which we can unlock, and we'll actually prioritize that in the research. So we'll do that first. And that'll be done by uh, pretty quickly uh, in a month and a half. And then uh, we can get the tracking station upgrade set up, um, assuming we have budget. I mean, our daily change is pretty good. It's just that, you know, uh, we have been spending a lot. Now, I have noticed that there is a space plane development section here that requires us to pick up a crude space plane development program. And this will all be very helpful eventually for my intentions but there is no crude space plane program, right? Crude lunar exploration, yes. Crude space plane program, no. So, and I've just updated the RP1 and all the things that have been updated. In fact, quite a lot of mods just got updated. Uh, but yeah, so I'm, I'm interested in that. And if we get to the point where we finish the crude orbit thing, which all we need to do is first EVA, uh, I might want to just create the crude space plane thing, the program, and I'll probably give it the same stats as the crude orbit one. It's probably less than what they would intend, but since I'm already sort of developing the crude space plane, maybe that'll be all right. I don't think there's anything particularly special here, but you know, things have to be balanced, but I would assume that they would consider they would consider a crude orbit payout to be balanced or you know underbalanced you know so hopefully hopefully that would be good and if they don't add it by the time I'm ready for it I'll just add try to add some sort of program for that and the same with the space station we're not looking at that yet we'll probably try the crude lunar landing first but the space station ought to happen. And currently we don't have the program for that either. Earth space station. So I'm looking into that sort of thing. Also, it does occur to me that for EVAs, we do have to upgrade the astronaut complex. So uh, while we've been working on the space plane and all that, uh, we need to get this started as well. But it's expensive, 500,000. It's more expensive than any upgrade that we've done so far just to get them to get outside. It does reduce the r and r times and training times, but I'd rather reduce their, like, costs. <laughs> the, the amount that we pay them. Maybe, you know, having a nice astronaut complex is like a residential perk, you know. They, they, can, they have uh, nicer housing or something like that already provided. But right now we're gaining 947 per day and this will cost 882 per day. That's not a whole lot of extra considering we don't have much money to start off with. So we have to do that, but maybe we'll wait until we get closer to this bump here. So yeah, that is the plan. When I previously quit the game, I quit by uh, using the X in the corners, so that accidentally meant that we didn't have advanced communications up here. I've put it back up here, so if you're wondering why we suddenly had extra science, it's because I didn't quit properly. So, uh, we have uh, put that back up there. Okay, we've now completed the advanced communication stuff, the research, and I'm beginning the upgrade of the tracking station that we will do. Oh, now I've upgraded the mods, and now they've got all sorts of additional information here. Um, well, it doesn't seem to increase S-band power, huh? So this is how it is right now. 
when I highlight it, it says supports COM codecs up to tech level 5, but it doesn't say anything about better DSN. It used to say better DSN power, and it used to have different ranges, but it doesn't increase the power of our anything. So it just says support the tech level, but it doesn't improve our DSN network. That's not what I was intending, right? I was hoping this upgrade would allow us to avoid editing these, but I guess we're going to have to edit them. There's no intrinsic benefit to this. It used to say that I would increase the gain on our DSM by 3 decibel, whatever the heck those are. Um, well, I guess we have to, I mean, so that we can get the tech level 5 antennas on. Um, now we're losing money again. Uh, it's wavering. It's not sure how much money we've got. Uh, it's going down. Okay. So, yeah, how long is that going to take? Till August. would like to do something else, but it's not like we have a lot of money. Uh, let's, I guess, see what Tech Level 5 gets us in terms of these. So right now we got 40 decibel, and I guess it's milliwatts. I think previously I said meters because that seemed logical, but um, looking it up, it's milliwatts. Okay, 40,000 for ComTech level 5. Fortunately, we had some credit. Unlock credit. Okay, now... Tech level 5. Well, it basically doubles our transmit power. How far out can we go? Jupiter? It says we can even do Jupiter. Sort of low bit rate, but says we can do Jupiter with this, folks. Well, we'll see about Mars first. So, we'll, we won't skimp on it. I mean, Tech Level 5 takes less power anyway. Okay, well, Tech Level 5 it is. We'll update that, both of the Duna missions. Oh, sorry, Mars missions. Calling them Duna is probably a bad idea, actually. Okay, here we go with this crazy thing. And this time we're using just the rocket engines, which is even crazier. Unlock these now. Okay, S8, well, just atmospheric autopilot. Throttle up. And, yep, those are the ones. Ignition. At least we're getting data on them. Oh. Can it actually go up? Or just rotate? Oh, I think it just rotate. Oh, 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 okay. Brakes, 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 brakes. Oh, we don't have avionics. We don't have brakes. Um, <laughs> whoops. This is now on a long journey. Where's... I mean, it's got to get to the water at some point. Oh, I shouldn't have this warp. There, there's, there's some sort of edge here that caused it to get destroyed. Oh, well. Don't know if those are recoverable. But back to Space Center. Oh, well, I guess we can. Well, whatever that is. Cover... It's a whole long chain of debris. It very briefly shows the recovery dialogue, but doesn't keep it up for some reason. Okay, well, that was my fault. I pulled up too early. We should have waited for more velocity. Don't know how much velocity, but... What might Far have to say about that? Well, we could probably pitch up 10 degrees. 117 is fast, but, you know, let's see, Mach 0.3. We would have to pull up 12 degrees at 101 meters per second. So, somewhere between those. We might just wait until 117. Our wheels can take 135 right now. And, yeah, we'll build another one. Again, at least there's no Kerbals. 
putting extra parachutes on probably won't work. It seems like there's no opportunity to parachute, especially if we lose the back end with the controller on it. Okay, we completed the tracking station upgrade. Not so you'd notice, but it's there somewhere. We're sort of in a limbo here. Once we get the technology for the Mark 1-3 pod, we can do the EVA like that while we're still working on the Maya spacecraft. Mars window is coming up soon. All right, let's try it again. Okay, atmospheric autopilot on. Fuel tank unlocked. And throttle up and go. These don't exactly have great specific impulse at sea level, which is why I was going to use the jet engines anyway, or thrust for that matter. I'm aware of that. <laughs> I'm aware of that, but it, it's still working, right? It's still working. Okay, we'll try to rotate. Oh, okay, we lost the body flap, but we're going up. <laughs> I don't know how valid the situation is, but... What are those bus for? That's weird. We'll try to land. Well, we're going faster now. Okay, I'm gonna try and cut them and see how it goes. Then at least we got data on the rocket engines. Might give us a chance to see the one engine on situation. In fact, I think that might be good. Uh, the turning definitely lost us more speed than I expected. It's got a big wing. Um, Z is not throttling up the way I expected. What has gone wrong? Hmm. Yeah, for some reason my throttle isn't going up. Yeah, I'm not able to throttle up. I don't know why. Mm. Input locks or something? I don't know. Nope. Well, we're gonna land short of the runway. Nothing I can do about that if we can't add any thrust. Ooh, rough. Uh, don't, don't. Ah, oh, you took the engines and the entire backside. <laughs> and now we can't stop again. Me having the avionics unit in the tail is a bad idea. Well, darn it, I'm done flight testing this thing. We'll put it on a rocket and see what happens. Uncrewed. It can fly and everything. I don't know why I couldn't throttle up though. Now it's throttled up. At the end, when the back end got lost, I was able to throttle up. Don't quite understand why. Maybe it'll hit a building or a lip that'll slow it down. Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah, that's not good. Oh. Oh, oh. Yep. Okay, so we're just going to jump into trying it out with this bad idea. 
and it looks like we actually have to update the GSE this time. Everything else is nominal. But uh, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> uh, well, maybe someday they'll give us extra money for developing a space plane, but for now we're gonna have to bite the cost of this. So, upgrade. 14,000 apparently, suddenly. I don't know why. Because we've been launching a Hydrolock stage with just about the same amount of fuel, because it's the same engines, right? The two of the RZ-20s on the pad already. I don't even know what other fuel this has. But whatever, can't argue. Got take until October. Well, it's, you know, a little bit over two weeks. Okay. Building. And we'll actually have to send the staff over. 951? Guess so. Who's not working on anything? Well, everybody else is not working on anything. We can remove the hangar people. They've just lost their plane. That's uh, too expensive. Let's just have a thousand here. December 16th. Okay, so we'll have our Mars window and send those out. And then we'll try the space plane on its launcher and see if it flips up. Okay, here's the launch of the Duna 2 to Mars. SAS on, throttle. Okay, throttle is working. And ignition. And launch. Now, technically, all we have to do is fill a flyby mission. The main struggle is comms. Uh, we don't even have to get into orbit with them, but they're configured as orbiters. We're past the speed of sound. This is the large version, not the RZ-20 Hydrolox version. Oh. Alright, separation, separation, okay, separation. <laughs> Lots of separations. Um. Hmm? There didn't seem to be an error here, but it seems like this thing failed. Flame out, no propellants. I mean, it is just a normal... normal stage we've been using. Well, I mean, no ignitions remaining now, yeah. Okay, well, let's see... before I get rid of this stage, right? It says okay for this engine, folks. I don't know what's going on here, but all right, well, uh, we're not going to Mars with the- well, we could probably do a flyby, actually. Maybe we can still do the flyby. It'll be hard, though, because we can't reignite this stage, and I don't think the upper bit has enough for the transfer. No. So we'll have to make sure it'll only work if we can we don't normally lose the stage and have this sort of thing work for anything. Um, if we can just boost our apoapsis immediately. And if we can toss ourselves high enough right now, maybe. I doubt it, though. We really need to be over here when we do the burn to transfer. Maybe they change the engine stats on that, or what kind of fuel it uses? I don't think that's a nice thing to do in the middle like that. Oh, we're uh, gonna be crashing into the surface pretty quickly like that. Okay. So that's about the burn of the next engine. Selling the fuel down. And go. 
Okay, we're in orbit. Okay, 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 uh, kill rotation. I should have not had hold the node there. 3,900 still. Yeah, our apoapsis isn't in the right place at all. Well, let me see if I can do something. Well, we didn't really match inclinations with the moon at all, so... We'll just set it up as a commsat in general. Okay, we'll just circularize up there, and it'll be a commsat, and that's all we can do. These solar panels were meant for Mars, so they'll probably last a bit. Okay, we'll leave it there. Alright, sun. And it's got a second lease on life. Let's take a look at the other Mars mission. We need at least one of these to work. Okay, you. Oh, see, what they did was they removed the other configurations from this engine. They quote-unquote fixed it, just so that they could mess me up. Alright, uh, so where's the v vacuum Viking? It's not fair, but uh, I guess we were using the Viking C. We have 10,000 for that, okay. And... That one uses this UH-25, okay. It says propellant GSC, no. Well, now it says yes. Wait, I pull this off. It says propellant GSE, no. It's not okay. It should have all the GSE for this, right? I don't understand the propellant GSE thing at all. <laughs> so, uh, if I put this on, now it's okay. But isn't it supposed to be just how what tankage we have out on, at the Space Center? Why should it be a problem here? Maybe it automatically goes to know when the mass is not enough. I don't know, but we'll have to have slightly larger fairings. It's going to take a day, but that's not the worst. Two days, 21 hours. Fine. Nothing else has to be changed. Hopefully this one will work. I should have noticed. I, I sort of glanced at the Delta V reading on the previous one, and it didn't make any sense. Should have noticed that. We need, and I also glanced at the Delta V reading on the space plane one, but I thought it was just bad staging. We have to edit that one as well. Yeah, this tank has UH-25, so these were not configured as Viking 2s. And that's why it doesn't have the Delta V. Well, there's this Viking 5 slash 6. That uses UDMH and NTO, though. If I unlock those, finally. Maybe we should try them out. They don't, do they seem better? They don't actually seem better. They might be more reliable. They're not that much more reliable. <laughs> I mean, oh, these are. The Viking 5B is. But this one still has better ISP and vacuum. Sea level, that one is better. Vacuum, this one is better, but not by that much. Uses UDMH though. Any. Oh, there's UH25, so we don't have to change things that much. But we can't purchase it. It requires 1967 overall technology. This one's UH25. More burn time. Okay, well, we'll put a bunch of those. But it's gonna take a while to rebuild it, but we're not in a hurry with this one anyway. It says propellant GSE is okay. That's the important part. Let me just make sure that the fuel mixture is right. That's a big canard. <laughs> I, didn't, I, I didn't notice it was that big before. That's big enough to make me feel really guilty. Okay, well, if this doesn't work for this window, we're either going to have to wait for the next Mars window, which is a while, or we'll have to do something truly remarkably, remarkably desperate. Okay, SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. Okay, certainly through max Q. Everything looking fine so far. Uh, we've got some issue there, but staging time. 
and that lit this time, and fairy mist. And it's got a nice big vacuum nozzle. Not that its vacuum efficiency is that much better than the sea level ones, but anyway. It does have that nozzle. Okay, and staging. Oh, that's a long pause. Okay, I was worried it was going to do something nefarious there. We're a little bit long on the time to lap laps this year. 4,600 AO units now. Okay, shut down. 256 by 167. Plenty of Delta V for the transfer. And let's see what MacJeb has to say about that transfer. Unset and reset target to reset that. ASAP. Seems like a long transfer. 323 days, but if I mean that's because of the sending and descending node, it certainly doesn't cost that much. So that's okay. Well we're we've got one Leosat there and one over there. So we gotta lose the back one, but we probably gotta stick with the front one. Okay, selling fuel down. And ignition. Okay, we've got two of them. We are on escape. Okay, that'll be good enough. Let's see what's going on at the Mars end. No, we don't have an encounter. Let's see. The RCS this a little bit. That is getting us closer. Now we have an encounter. Okay, I think I'll separate the stage. Okay, let's see. All right, seems like a case for a mild mid-course correction. Always good to check off, uh, check up on our probes along the way anyway. Very small correction. We'll take that for now. Okay, so this one's recharging. And I'll just shut down avionics for safety's sake. And we'll meet up again with it in 163 days and hopefully it'll still have communications. So yes, off it goes, spinning. And so we've ended up with one Mars flyby mission that will be hopefully an orbiter. And only after that will we be able to pick up the orbiter contract and finally get this done. Which really leaves the crew and the first EVA. So how's the money? Well, it's not that good right now. We'll wait until we finish building the launch of the Maya spacecraft. We'll see what happens with that in the next video. That should be exciting. <laughs> uh, or it could be quick. It could be quick. We'll find out. So with that, Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.